Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon for the Europeans. It is a pleasure to me today present to you this panel to empower people with disabilities in the framework of the Zero Project and thanking the presence of everyone here, everyone's attendance now precisely speaking about the tools and mechanisms that disabled people need to empower themselves and particularly to be more independent. In this panel, we have several experts who will share very interesting projects, very relevant projects that have been developed throughout the region to include people with disabilities. In this panel, we'll also be listening about other perspectives about training, education, and different ways to include people with disabilities, both for them to have a proper education, and this education shall lead them at some point to have the labor inclusion and employment inclusion either formally or informally and what's helped us the most is precisely the different entrepreneurships that people with disabilities are establishing to achieve their independent life goals my name is Irene Alarso Cordova from Quito Ecuador I'm an activist for the rights of people with disabilities as a woman with cerebral palsy at 29 years old. I've been working almost 18 years in activism. Partic I've participated in different national and international conferences promoting rights for people with disabilities and promoting also this change, this perspective shift that everyone lacks in order to know and discover what human diversity really is. Currently, I'm working as an official of the Technical Secretariat of Toda Una Vida Plan. As you know, in Ecuador, we're still at a transitioning process and all of these topics will, won't be left aside because we have been working strongly on disabilities and particularly about the cross-cutting nature of the focus on gender as well through the disabilities work. I would like today to summarize or give you a very brief outlook for you to understand why empowerment is important and why we must know ourselves and recognize ourselves as people with disabilities and in a way to gain those tools that will allow us to be independent and to have the ability to make our own decisions in the different areas of our lives i believe it is truly important to understand that someone either with a disability or not, must have the tools and the knowledge and the different types of information in order to empower themselves. And empowerment is the acknowledgement of someone's, the, of our own value, acknowledgement of our rights and the acknowledgement of our input in society or for society understanding if we don't if we can't understand what someone's input or contribution to society is we won't be creating the tools or mechanisms to empower those people people as long as they feel useful as long as these people could can be a part of society they will have all of the experience they need to empower themselves. Why is it important to speak about empowerment precisely to create, to make our own destinies because uh, people with disabilities have been historically left aside and 
everyone else decides for us, but with these tools and with these different types of training and education, we can, in a way, achieve or get to that destination, right? The fact that we can decide for ourselves. And this is what helps us to break or to change the stigmas, the paradigms that are very rooted in Latin America, very deeply rooted, the capacity society who's, or who's able to live a normal life, normal. Well, everything has allowed us to join our efforts and arrive to different projects to promote independent lives of people with disabilities. Also, speaking a little about gender and the gender gap that we're facing, that women with disabilities face, it is also important to address the fact that disabled women are three times more likely to be illiterate in comparison to men with disabilities. So disabled women have two times less likelihood of using the internet. And what does that mean? For an era where everything is global and is on the web, at least in the pandemic context, everything became telematic. So what does that mean? That there's still a huge gap to close so that both men and women can have access to the same rights, education and employment. And with the idea of empowering ourselves and becoming independent. Now, I can finally add that being independent, being autonomous allows us to never doubt our sense of belonging in society and never doubt about our value. And now I will give the floor to Gloria Bazan's presentation. She's a social worker with the Universo Accessible Foundation from Spain. Gloria considers herself as a fighter. She has a liberal policy as well, and she affirms that with the help of her parents, she has become self-sufficient in every area of her life. Three years ago, she created a video CV through Facebook with over 500,000 visits, making her case visible. And she received the opportunity of proving everything she was able to obtain. She's a social worker and she's helped people with many difficulties, with several functional diversities. And thanks to the Universal Santi project, she's managed to know wonderful people who deserve to have an opportunity to prove they can perform any work, overcoming any judgment. She's a proud member of the women sector and even more uh, women with disabilities. They, she fights to create a wider space in employment and the employment world and the labor world and maintaining and achieving more rights and equality and opportunities. Gloria, it is a pleasure to have you with us. Please activate your microphone. Story seldom told. I squandered my existence 
For a pocket full of moments, a sharp promise. Universo Santi es una realidad. Es una forma eficaz de contribuir a la mejora de la calidad de Universo Santi es una realidad. To improve the lives of people with disability. It's a strong bet for those who require to develop their abilities and to have real opportunities for success. This is a high cuisine restaurant and it requires training as with any project. They're true champions and they can be the protagonist of a wonderful story of inclusion, diversity and visibility. We give them the training that they didn't have. We gave them a, a, a job and there's dignity built from that. When you know there's story, whatever's behind people or their background, you know to what extent they can fulfill their goals. So this is a way to contribute inclusion with people with disabilities and it shows how a dream may come true. Un universo como, como el que recuerda Santi, ¿no? De, eh, de todo esto. This project, Santi, I see a beautiful project. Santi Santa Maria seeked excellence through his work with his career set in practice. He's become the symbol and the perfect excuse to create this project with a very particular universe, Santi universe. With effort and labor, everything is possible. It is easier to be inclusive in this fashion. Through training, you can have real integration. All of these workers with disabilities tell us about their experience and this initiative helps us understand that from words you can move to facts and these people using the language the kitchen language to show that they're so capable is amazing i work with desserts and i help my colleagues to create to clean Santi Universe is, well, Universo Santi can be very, very diverse. It can be very different reality every day, cleaning tables, setting up tables. Any business where you have 100% of the employees with disabilities, can make a difference. I can, my life is completely normal. There's nothing preventing me from to prevent me from working as a disabled people. This is a model that we exported to Madrid and it shows that you can fully integrate what they show every day is the illusion because they're now, they can gain a Michelin star. Yes, we work in equal conditions. There's no doubts of their capabilities.
Hello, everyone. My name is Gloria Vassan. And as you can tell, I am a woman with cerebral palsy that, of course, has not impeded me from studying my own career and live an autonomous life, an independent life. But the difficulties that I faced when I tried to access to enter the employment world when facing the company as well. Today, there's still so much judgment towards people with disabilities. Specifically, people with cerebral palsy well, this is a disability that could be easily confused with uh, an intellectual issue in our, because of our way of walking, how we speak, and our face expressions, which is why I'm always advocating to erase this judgment in society i had to fight because no business people would trust me with a job so i had to record a video cv a video resume and share it on social media which is how i became a part of of a foundation with called Universo Accessible, and I had access to Universo Santi restaurant. We are located near the border in Cadiz in Spain, and we tried to replicate and set up a project of high cuisine in honor of Santi Santa Maria. In, in a context and surroundings which seem to replicate a city because when you on enter Universo Santi, you see this beautiful farm and the and an entire story to tell about this border city and what it meant internationally today. This is a, an excellent wine brand also and the daughters of Santi spent the holidays and they lived in this house till the end of, her, of their days. And this property was a part of Universo Accessible Foundation and why Santi? Because Santi Santa Maria was a chef who achieved seven Michelin stars throughout the world. And he was a friend and a sponsor of Universo Accessible Foundation. So we, there's, this is sort of a homage for Santa Maria because of the empowerment of people with disabilities in the world of in the world of gastronomy and then for these people this job is important because it serves as a bridge to access autonomous and independent life and to have our own lives without depending on anyone and I would say that work dignifies people 
and we perform the work through uh, with any kind of physical and intellectual disabilities at Universo Santi because we offer a series of practica, practicums and afterwards we put them in contact with other companies so that they can have a job or develop training so that they can add it to their resumes and present it to the business world and state their worth professionally and break barriers and take down all the judgment, all the prejudice that exists when we face society, the business world and clients. And in this way, we can take down those barriers because the clients do not see the person with a disability who's serving in the kitchen or in the room, but they value the service that they're receiving. I personally work in the area of human resources and social work in the restaurant and public relations. It is a pleasure to share our project with you worldwide with all of you and hopefully you liked my presentation we are here at El Altillo farm near the frontier near the border well now i am honored to introduce to you the following panel members who will share about their project, this wonderful project that they've generated for the Jamaican community. They are Tashai and Blake Whitmer. They belong and have built this Def Can Coffee project. I will present Tashai, who is born in the part of a deaf family in Santa Isabel Church. She started studying at a very early age and she wishes for all deaf children to have the same access to education. She's, she has a bachelor's in psychology and a master's in education. Her career began at the Deaf Association in Jamaica as a social worker and then as a school counselor. Currently, she holds the position of executive director of the Caribbean Christian Center for the Deaf. She is a visionary educator with a passion for transformation of the deaf community. And we also have Blake Whitmer, who was born in West Lafayette in Indiana, United States. He grew up in a very diverse community, which had an influence in his interest for traveling abroad and interacting with other cultures. After his uh, bachelor's education in accountability, accountability and finance at Purdue University, he moved to Jamaica in 2009, where he met Tashai, who's the love of his life. Together, they founded the Def Can Coffee Foundation in 2015. But next, I'll give the floor to you so you can tell us about this interesting project. Def gain, how do we achieve that through cracking, cracking change? This is our presentation from our Def Can Coffee team in Jamaica. What does deaf mean? Most people, when they see a deaf person or see the word deaf, they think a person who can't hear or can't speak. But that's not reality. Our social enterprise redefines a negative view and tells a positive message that a deaf person can do anything. We do this by seeking to bring in deaf youth and engage them, equip them, and empower them so that both deaf and hearing can realize that we all need to shift our views of each other. 
What do you see when you see this picture? What does that look like on the table? Maybe some of you see that and you think it looks like a bunch of garbage. Well, the reality is, is that it's a beautiful design, a beautiful artistic capture of a city skyline. This is why it's important about how we view a person. Sometimes we see a person from the wrong perspective or we don't have the right light. And so we see something that we think we see is not worth anything, but the reality is there's something beautiful there. Instead of seeing a deaf person as a piece of trash or something that's broken, we need to recognize that none of us are perfect, but we all have purpose. When we recognize that each person has their own lack of perfection, but they're full of potential, that is when we'll be able to respect our differences. After we successfully respect our differences, then we'll be able to treat each other as equals and we'll all be able to work together to make a more beautiful world. What does the deaf lack? Again, most people think that we lack hearing. That is not what we lack. It has nothing to do with what our ears do or do not do. What all that matters is language. We lack language access. The second thing that we lack is affirmation of who we are as deaf people. Society does not affirm us in who we are as a deaf person, and they don't recognize the pride that we have. We lack community. We lack the support that other people have naturally through our society, and we want to develop that community. And that ultimately impacts knowledge, where people don't have full knowledge of themselves and their skills and abilities and what they can do to contribute back to the hearing world. So how do we fill up that lack? The first thing we have to do is teach language. Language access will allow a person in Jamaican sign language to learn and to teach their coworkers. Through Deaf Can Coffee, we're teaching people sign language and helping more hearing people realize what the deaf can do. We affirm deaf identity. We're spotlight in media appearances. Our staff are put on stage and able to showcase to the world all their different abilities and what they're able to do. In the communities we're included and we're showing in different areas that we can be a contributor back to broader society. And that fills up knowledge that allows us to go and to serve others. And that's a full cup. That's how we address this lack. So success in Deaf Can Coffee, what does that look like? In 2017, we traveled to Vienna and presented at Zero Project for creative employment. At that time in 2017, we had three part-time employees and we had one location. Today in 2021, we have 15 full-time staff and we're working in eight different locations. We're making a profit and our business is scaling up. Our primary growth is through partnerships. We find different cafes and coffee shops that need to improve their coffee service. Instead of them having to look out in the general marketplace to find and hire hearing people to work as baristas, we offer them a solution. We already have trained baristas that are already an expert in their field. And we place them in partnership with these other cafes and coffee shops to help our partners improve their own coffee service. We're becoming known for excellence. Our deaf baristas have won the National Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee Festival barista competition the last three years. And we continue to showcase the talent of our deaf staff throughout the island. What we're doing through our business is we're creating solutions and we're inspiring inclusion. So what's the secret? How do we succeed? It's really quite simple. We shift perspective. We don't want people to see us for people who can't. We want people to see deaf persons, people who can do anything. Being deaf does not take away our abilities. It does not contribute to our lack. Being deaf allows us to be better baristas. We see, we touch, we smell, we taste. That's called deaf gain. We use our gifts. We use our talent. We use our embodied ability to express the world and craft better coffee. We spread this message of deaf, deaf excellence and that builds our brand. It creates business value while also at the same time advocating and affecting for society to shift their view, to change and to include and embrace the deaf community in a positive way. 
So what we do through our business is we're both developing business value with advocacy. It's just like pouring a latte. You need espresso and then you need your milk to be poured perfectly in to craft the two items together and to make the perfect latte. One Saturday morning at the Jamaica Pegasus, I noticed a busy stall. Typically I avoid crowds, but on this occasion, I was drawn in by a frantic silence. I got in line, placed an order, and stepped back to observe. Stephen Bailey said, coffee is about care and detail. If you enjoy machines, materials, and processes, which I do, it's extremely pleasing. Defcan don't just brew coffee. They plant, pick, roast, market, and craft it. I offered them a job at Toyota Coffee House before I finished my espresso. Over the years, Defcan and Toyota have grown together. They taught us how to communicate, and we've consulted on their business. Personally, I think people focus too much on the deaf part of deaf can coffee. We focus on their craft. Now you've seen that video of us advocating through business for change in society. So what does it look like on our next stage of our journey? After six years, we've continued to learn and we're partnering with others. And we've just recently opened our first public cafe in June of 2021. We have also piloted a coffee farm. For the last four years, we've been growing coffee and we recently expanded our coffee farm and procured equipment to continue expanding the process of our own coffee cherry. So what's next? Look out for Deaf Can Coffee to continue to change the perspective of deaf youth and give the world a new lens. Well, now we have the tremendous honor of introducing Dr. Abdul Bazir, the executive director of AABRAR Afghan Amputee Bicyclists for Rehabilitation and Recreation. Dr. Abdul is the founder and executive director of ABRAR, as I mentioned, since 1992. He is a physician and has worked in several hospitals in Afghanistan and Pakistan during his period as refugee. In 1992, after going back to Afghanistan, Dr. Abdul Bazir founded ABRAR to cure the wounds of over a million people with disabilities who have lost valued parts of their body. He managed over 200 different projects for the rehabilitation of Af vulnerable Afghans throughout the country. He attended several national and international conferences on matters related to disabilities in several countries around the world, such as the United States, the United Kingdom, Malaysia, Nepal, India, South Korea, Switzerland, Germany, Greece, Bulgaria and Turkey and Tajikistan, etc. He's uh, rather well known, a dedicated person, and we have the honor of having him here today to tell us about his experience in this wonderful panel. We give the floor to you. Uh, generating income and employment opportunities for persons with disabilities through bicycle training and rehabilitation services. This is uh, Dr. Basir Turiale from Afghan Amputee Bicycles for Rehabilitation and Recreation, Abrar, Afghanistan. Uh, about Abrar, Afghan Amputee Bicycle for Rehabilitation and Recreation is a local NGO or non-governmental organization that's concerned with the physical rehabilitation and socioeconomic integration of disabled people and other vulner vulnerable groups in the community. Our project goal is 
the goal of this project is to rehabilitate persons with disabilities and assist them to integrate into the community by implementing a training program that equip persons with disabilities with the skills needed to live an independent life. Uh, the participants of our trained, uh, training are provided bike training on their uh, timetable for one month. During this one month period, they also get literacy, numeracy, mind awareness, health education, and uh, drug awareness courses. These courses help them uh, to have knowledge of uh, traffic rules and regulations besides riding bicycles. Afghan Amputee Bicycle is for Rehabilitation and Recreation of our base in Kabul is an NGO that runs a monthly bicycle training program for persons with disabilities. Participants learn to ride and repair bicycle in addition to receiving vocational health and literacy training. Following trainings, training participants receive a bicycle. Uh, they can then work in bicycle repair, use the bicycle to offer mobile services or use it to transport themselves to work between uh, 2001 and 2020. Abroad has trained 7,125 person with uh, no limbs or with uh, disabilities. Uh, the innovative aspect of this project is Abra runs this bicycle training program with 20 participants per month. Uh, and experienced training teaches the trainees how to repair and ride bicycle, which are modified by Abra mechanics to accommodate the needs of the trainees' uh, disability. The program provides accommodation and meals to the participant during the training period, which also includes uh, numeracy classes health education and first aid instruction. Abrar also provide vocational training relevant to the local market to support adult, adult trainees to use the bike for income uh, generation upon completion. Participants receive a certificate in a bicycle from Abra, which they can use it to set up mobile business uh, as a low cost mode of transportation to other work. Person with disabilities were trained how to ride bike. They use their bicycles for employment pur uh, uh, purposes to improve the standard of their lives and support their families and members. The impact created, um, Abrar estimated that more than 7,000 people are using their uh, skills and income generation activities such as selling mobile phones, recharge cards, using knife sharpening tools and uh, machines, running mobile fresh snack shops in uh, bicycle repair. There are five key elements of our bicycle rehabilitation program for persons with disabilities, which includes first mobility, uh, second health, third basic education and four employment and fifth financial security. The, the success factor details examples, uh, anecdotes, life stories, increased anticipation of people with persons with disabilities in all aspects of economic and social life, improved mobility. Number of boys and men use their bicycles to, for travel. Number of men earning an income after their graduation from the program, improved economic situation, improved health. Now PWDs are employed and earning money. 85% of PWDs earning an income for the skills they acquired through the training program. Success story, Jamal, Jamal Khan bike project trainees, one of the beneficiaries said, I cannot express my happiness as a result of the training, uh, I can work and generate income for my family. Uh, 
the financing, uh, this business model was very essential uh, for the physical and economic reintegration of persons with disabilities in Afghanistan, which focused on the five key elements, as I discussed earlier. Also, this program was uh, financed by various donor agencies, including Caritas Germany, European Union, Medico International, UNICEF, and some local businesses. Uh, Sustainability of the target group has been taken into consideration in the light of rehabilitation of persons with disabilities. Sustainability is built into the overall design of the specific program components. The bicycle training component was designed to improve the mobility of people with disabilities and to assess those in taking out of disappointed uh, situation in psycho, uh, psychosocial or uh, psychological strength and uh, mobility is one of the core problems to disable. So by learning bicycle riding, they will be able to live in independent, independent and enjoyable life in the society. The target group was considered taking part in daily of social uh, social activities after uh, enabling to uh, move around. The financial strengthening of the families of persons with disabilities was also considered to be improved because they can use their bicycles as mobile shop or can participate in other local market businesses. Similarly, the, the young students, disabled can use their bicycles for going to schools. Uh, now I would like to talk about our challenges Approximately 84% of persons with disabilities are unemployed, compounding the existing issues faced by persons with disabilities. Hence, we need more funding to support PWDs. The next step for the project, conducting uh, conduct monitoring visits to make sure trained PWDs are earning income and working. We have list of more than 12,000 persons with disabilities in various provinces of Afghanistan, whom we surveyed and waiting for the bicycle rehabilitation program. But due to lack of funding, we are not able to train them under this program, relieve them from disappointment and make them effective part of their uh, concerned community. At this stage, we just need funding from donors agencies in partnership with international nonprofit organization to train more than 12,000 persons with disabilities waiting for this program as indicated above. Some of the pictures are shown here. Uh, it's uh, one uh, uh, window of uh, this balloon, balloon cellar, which is very lightweight and uh, usually children like them very much. So he is going from street to street, uh, spending the time and selling the balloons uh, in order to uh, gain income. Uh, one thing, uh, uh, this is a kind of uh, the bicycle and we fitted a machinery. Uh, which uh, a person with disability move the pedal. He's using a machinery with also with it also. So this is uh, a, a cotton candy machine, and uh, also there is a knife sharpening stones on, on the handlebar or under the handlebar. Uh, so two type of activities this can be done on this bike. And also, if you put a juice on the top of the this this. Uh, greenish things on the on the top of the handlebar just put a a, a juicer you can make a, um, bananas juice apple juice and uh, the, the other juices in the meantime it also can make cotton candy or it's called uh, candy floss uh,
Uh, I also would like to mention about the, the civil cycle messenger service. That was the only service uh, just we started in, 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 Ka in Kabul. Uh, to use, the, the, they were almost 16 person that they, was, they were trained uh, in Kabul city and also in bicycle riding, uh, how to uh, uh, transfer, uh, I mean, parcels, uh, fast foods, pizzas, and also for the guest houses of the, our uh, foreign, foreign, foreign partners. Uh, the, it was very successful and a very successful uh, business. Somebody sitting at home and called the DCMS that uh, he want anything from bazaar. Then the DCMS uh, pay the bill for the shopkeepers. And when he hand over the, 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 the required delivery, then the, the, the person is paying uh, the bill and also a tip of uh, 50 to 100 Afghans uh, to the disabled messenger. Uh, this is all for now. Uh, thank you so much. If there are any questions, uh, I would be uh, delighted to answer that. We thank everyone for joining us today in this beautiful wonderful panel we'll now move on to the round of questions for our panel members i would like to mention well i would like to start by asking gloria about what kind of difficulties uh, this pandemic has brought this covid 19 has brought and how have you dealt with this in this incredible project that you told us about? Well, truthfully for us, it's been a very harsh, very difficult process because we had to mandatorily close our doors last year at the restaurant and we've been 15 months closed. And we are now back to the restaurants less than a month ago and we've recovered a part of the staff but the situation is difficult and we just want to dare so we're still betting on this uh, very slowly it the pandemic has been useful to report knowledge and have many meetings on zoom it's been useful to continue our professional development in in terms of disabled people and hospitality service. Uh, we have questions from the audience. What are the goals, the objectives of the project for the next years? Knowing that we are still in this process, overcoming this pandemic and trying to recover, uh, what are the objectives that you've set? Well, the first one is more critical which was to recover what's uh, that and be well known by people in the country, but internationally, whenever tourism recovers, uh, they should know that we're open, that this is an open project for any clients in, from any area or any country can come and visit us. And that is, that that's the first step to recover our clients and to be more well known by everyone. And the second goal would be, well, to, to, today we're a place, we're located in a farm, of many hectares. It's a very large farm. So there's room for many other projects we also want to open 
another gastronomic project, but in a more informal uh, project, so to speak, in a more informal setting to provide knowledge and employment for disabled people. Thank you so much for your kind answers. It is very interesting to know your plans for the future and how you're benefiting everyone with disability, particularly people with cerebral palsy, a community that has been uh, very separate and forgotten by the state and not acknowledged by society. So I will now ask questions for Tashay and Blake. These questions are, I would like to know what way this project that you presented is benefiting the community of deaf women in Jamaica. Yes, thank you. Um, our primary purpose is to give a stage um, and a platform on which a deaf person is able to perform with excellence. And so one of the main we, ways we do this specifically uh, with our female staff is by, by putting them in positions where they are seen and where they're executing their job with, with excellence and doing it to the best of their abilities. Our pastries um, that our baking team produces are put on display at multiple locations. Um, and people, the customers are, are informed, even if it's not our cafe, they're informed through a sign on the counter that something was made by a deaf person that, that was baked by a deaf person. Um, we also do a lot of video, uh, uh, short video features, and we always make sure to include uh, various uh, elements of our staff on those videos. Um, but our, our women are leaders. And so as society continues to see deaf women in leadership, in various positions and various roles, they'll continue to have their perspective shifted from viewing and defining a deaf person as somebody who can't uh, to shift their perspective and realize that a deaf person truly can do anything. Um, and certainly in, in many cases, a woman, a deaf woman may be more marginalized than a deaf man. It is not true in all circumstances, but it may be the case. And so the more that we put our deaf women in positions of, of, of giving them platforms where they are seen and where they're recognized, recognized for their capacities and their talent, the more that that will shift how society views them. Thank you so much for your kind answer. It is truly important to change perspective and recognize that there are different kinds of disabilities and above all that women are there women with disabilities and this intersectionality is not go again these gender gaps must be overcome i have a question which i believe everyone in this context uh, this pandemic context of, of covid 19 are very intrigued about how this has this project sustained given that Many were in lockdown for long times and people with disabilities in a way are more, more vulnerable to uh, contracting diseases or contagions of this virus. And how, I would like to know how have you solved or overcome these challenges in this pandemic times? Yes, uh, as a coffee business, uh, COVID has certainly impacted us greatly. Um, many of our cafe locations had to close down because they are places of public access and we were not allowed to have customers come in for months. We were shut down completely. Um, slowly over time, we came out of that and then we actually went into a second shutdown again. Um, but the primary way that it's impacted our business is that we did a lot of events and Jamaica as a culture has a lot of events that happen um, on the weekends and in evenings, and we would often go and set up uh, a table at these events and we would do a pop-up. Uh, so for the last uh, 16 months, we've basically had no ability to do pop-up events. Um, that's actually how our business started, uh, started with pop-up events. Then we transitioned uh, in 2017, 2018 to having partnership locations at cafes where our staff were working. 
Um, so we've been impacted on multiple sides. Um, however, um, we've tried to make the most of it. Um, so while we were in shutdown, we did some physical modifications to our building where we do all of our baking and all of our coffee roasting. And we were able to improve our physical space during that shutdown period so that now as we're coming out of COVID, we're in a better position to continue to scale up and grow. Um, we were also able to invest a lot of time on our farm. There were no restrictions uh, to agriculture. Um, so we were able during the COVID lockdown times, we were still able with our team to go and maintain isolation working on our farm. And so we were able to put a lot of time into our farm that we normally wouldn't be able to put into the farm because our cafes were closed. So it has uh, impacted us tremendously. Um, we lost over 50% of our revenue, um, but we've been able to maintain 95% of our jobs. And so uh, we're thankful for that. And as we come out of COVID now, we're, we're preparing to be able to scale up, and continue to grow. Muy interesante. Muchísimas gracias por la, por la respuesta. Very interesting. Thank you for your answer. It is indeed very relevant to know about this, that small businesses, uh, entrepreneurships always have, always are impacted greatly in this kind of situations, particularly when it involves lockdowns or the prevention from continuing normal activities and daily lives, right? So we are all responsible. I have a question for Blake and Gloria joining us today. How do you believe that people with disabilities should reach those leadership positions and those decision-making positions because there's still a long path to cover uh, different international instances. There's an intent to promote that independent life that we desire so much. So what should we do as disabled people? Sometimes we don't know much about our rights, uh, sometimes uh, the access to information is restricted, but what else can we do as disabled people in order to reach that final end, right? The goal. Well, I believe it's important to show ourselves to society as we are. And I think that disabled people should have leadership positions because then they will empower others and they will talk to the collective right of disabled people and they will change perspectives. It is possible to be a role model for other future generations because unfortunately there will always be people with disabilities, but they can show that disabled people can be educated and escalate to leadership positions so that whenever they reach that those, those positions, they can serve to other people with disabilities and even at a later stage, they can create social policies or other projects. Yeah, I would say that it's necessary. Um, it is on us to make sure that all of our community members are represented in leadership positions. Uh, for us, the proof uh, that Death Can Coffee is the best coffee is in a taste in a cup. When a customer gets a cup of coffee and it tastes excellent, 
and they know that a deaf person was was the one responsible for making that excellent cup of coffee, then there's no more questions left in their mind about what a deaf person can or cannot do. So we must continue to put our deaf members of the community in leadership in decision-making uh, roles so that as they go out and perform with excellence and craft coffee, people are aware that, that this was a deaf person that did every part of this process. They're the ones that grew it on the farm. They're the ones that processed it. They roasted it, and then they brewed it as a barista in the cafe. When a, when a customer sees a deaf person doing every single element of the process and doing it with excellence, then there's nothing left in their minds. They can't walk away from that experience thinking some person is limited. The only thing that they think about is, wow, that deaf person made the best cup of coffee I've ever had. And the more that we put excellent products and excellent service into the marketplace, then the marketplace as a whole will start to shift their perspective and they will not be defining a person by what they cannot do, but will be accepting and believing in them for what they can do. Thank you so much. It is very important to prove that people are able to do things our way, but we need the opportunity to show this. If we don't, we're not, if we're not given this opportunity, many talents are lost, many talents are left aside. And it's precisely those processes of being in what's, what's important because otherwise we won't have the possibility to show our skills, our talent. Up next, I have a question for Dr. Abdul. In his experience in the field of disability, I would like for you to expand on how in your experience from your background and from the project that you told us about, how have you given more relevance to people with disability in your work? Uh, yes, uh, we are uh, usually um, involving a uh, person with disabilities in the need assessment uh, part of our project and then planning and financing part of the project and then an implementation part of the project. So from beginning, the disabled people are involved in all uh, few phases of a project cycle management. Uh, so uh, the, the very famous slogans like uh, nothing, uh, nothing for us without us. We are uh, absolutely taking care of uh, those things that uh, any program designed for person with disabilities uh, they should be uh, involved from the beginning until the end, e even uh, when we are checking the uh, compact, the people with disabilities are involved from the from beginning of the project till the end, and also in the evaluation part of the program. And one thing I wanted to mention before that uh, those uh, graduates, uh, we were able to send them for the first time in the history of Afghanistan uh, a team to the Paralympic Games, which was in 1996 in uh, United States. And we sent a team uh, in 2004 to Athens. Uh, our cyclists participated in Athens Paralympic Games. And we sent a team to London in 1996 to participate in the Cycle Messenger World Championship. And also in 1996, the same champion was uh, held in San Francisco, United States and our participants were there. And uh, in uh, 2004, well, we also sent a team to Germany, Fra Frankfurt, to participate in uh, Cycling for Peace. Uh, in, what, in one part, uh, our disabled uh, got the first prize in uh, Frankfurt. But in the other events, uh, we get a good uh, place, but we did not win any medal.
Bueno, agradecemos eh, la... Well, now we thank everyone, everyone's answers, the valuable responses that we've received from Dr. Abdul as well. And thank you so much to all of the panelists for being here today, for participating in this event. Thanks to Zero Project for the opportunity to give us this time to share and talk about this topics, these projects that probably for different reasons we were, weren't receiving this information, but thanks to everyone seeing us live. Thanks everyone for their participation. It is important to continue promoting the rights of people with disabilities and we're always available, ready to solve any question you may have. Thank you.